Hello and welcome to the Angelati studio. So, um, Regis, welcome back to the, uh, to the Angelati studio. And uh, uh, all day I've heard Internet of Things being bandied about. You're one of the experts on Internet of Things within Ericsson. And uh, I just wanted to explore the topic a little bit more because uh, I have a frustration with that term Internet of Things. It, it gets used in all sorts of hyperbole. Uh, but within the utility sector, there's a real world demonstrable use case of how the Internet of Things is changing our world and what it's doing. Can I just ask you to expand a little bit more on that? I think a lot of people use smart grid or Internet of Things as buzzwords and not necessarily understanding what's behind it. 20 years ago we were already doing machine to machine and Internet of Things, whatever you want to label it, because uh, we were using SCADA to control the grid. So what's the difference now? Maybe that's, that's yeah. your question. Yeah. The, the, the difference is today, uh, because of big transformation in the grid, uh, renewable integration, a lot of ve electric vehicles which change the load in real time, because you want to be more efficient, you want to have the, uh, the lights, uh, the public light uh, with dimming, uh, that or with electricity coming on or off if you walk uh, be, be beyond yeah, the, the, yeah, the light. Yeah. Uh, for all these reasons, uh, you need to connect all these points. It doesn't mean big data, right? It's, right. I mean, it's still a few thousands, hundred thousand. It's not really what I call big data. It's, it's maybe a, it's small a lot of data. data. It's a lot of data. But it's not big data. But it's not big data yet. Yeah. So, so all these transformers, uh, the other assets, the uh, electric vehicle charging station, the renewable, they all have to be controlled more or less at the same time because in real time you have grid unbalance. So that's necessary to do that. Does it require big data? I don't know, it requires a software, that's, that's for sure. If you're in a microgrid, uh, it requires real-time processing, so it has to be very quick. And that's where the key is, it's got to yeah. be quick, hasn't it? It's going to be quick, it's right. going to be real-time. Not everything is real-time, if yeah. it's on the, on the wholesale market, it's slow, it's 15 minutes. If it's metering, it's maybe 15 minutes, maybe a few minutes, but if it's... Uh, Related to grid control, it has to be fast. It has to be a few seconds, milliseconds in some cases for protection, but that's, that's the key. So if you go to millisecond, then you have a lot of data, and then you have to do a, a lot of, uh, of processing, and you, and you can invent new services. And I think the Internet of Things is only the beginning. The big data use cases are difficult to build because not many people see what value can, can be done. And, and, and again, it's like when the Internet came, once you have the capabilities, people will think about new ways, new services they can build on top. And so, again, with, with the whole Internet of Things and you know over over buzziness of it as well, in within those sensors where they're acting in real time and all that stuff, yeah, what's the complexity between the, the, the data communication? Because you're talking about complex systems, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Someone's just plugging in a car, you know, that needs sensors, that needs sensoring, that needs to come back in real time. You know, uh, 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 you know is that going over a mobile network? Is that going to... How are we getting that speed of transmission and that speed of analysis as well to react? The, the, uh the telecommunication uh, is not really an issue. I mean, if you have 4G everywhere, it's not an issue at all. If you have power line carrier, yes, you cannot do uh, all of this in, in, in real time. So, so it is, there are easy ways to solve the, co the communication issue, but of course you need, you need to invest. Uh, and it, it's better to have a, a transverse approach. So you have not too many telecom networks and you have not too many platform for service enablement. That's why we, we try to push this uh, vision where you have, we don't have uh, 10 different silos, one for lighting, one for grid control. If you have a, a common approach with a small number of telecom networks, you have So synergies. all of this join, joins up yes, in your exactly, world. Exactly. But, and why do you want it to join up? Because aren't, aren't you also fighting against certain things like, so I'm the lighting guy, I'm the, I'm the thing, I, I, you know. That, the, 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 that, that's what people see today. And of right. course, everybody wants to pre protect his own, his own business, his own area. The reality is, if you are in a grid and somebody uh, pushes the renewable on one side and somebody else decides, I'm not going to use my car today and I'm going to uh, 
uh, not um, I'm going to use my storage and sell it to the grid, then it, it, it goes in the wrong direction and then it, it can create a lot of imbalance. So we have no choice but, but doing that in, in real time. So, but again, when you're sort of talking about that, you, you, you seem to be almost making a uh, it's a non-issue. We can do this in real time, you know. But but why all the commentators kind of saying, "Oh, this is so complex. All of these sensors working in real time." I mean, yeah, what's the, the uh, uh, you know, where's that noise coming from? Deploying the sensors uh, does cost money. Deploying actuators to act on it because if it's only measuring, it's good. But you have to act on it. It, it costs even more money. So. Here, every, every time you have to build a use case to see how much it costs and how much you gain from it. So you cannot only work on the constraints. You need to monetize uh, this data. So that's, that's the difficulty today. Is there really an issue with big data? I think we, the technology we have today, the engines we have today uh, are good enough to do this. I think what is really crucial is the use case. Right. The use case by silo mm -hmm. and the transverse use case. And because the transverse use case is much stronger than each individual use case. You cannot reach this transverse use case unless you break all the silos of the utilities or of the whole society because you right. can have utility transport and so on in the same way. So the, it just takes a reimagining of you know and, and breaking down some of those barriers to uh, connect it together. And, and also you can build uh, a custom solution to do this. The Internet of Things can be built for for silo. And I know many companies where they, they do that. They, they do their own service enablement platform and so on. And it seems cheaper than taking a big solution like like we may have. Mm. Uh, but but if you do a few cases together. A large solution where you have a mutualization of resources is much, much cheaper and allows you to evolve to the next. And resources. then you're getting economies of scale out of it, right? Yes. And do you kind of, because we're kind of coming to the end of our time here, and I'm glad we had this conversation because you, you know, I really wanted to explore and debunk some of this Internet of Things sort of jargon that's going out there. Do you see that there is a particular technology tipping point that? still needs to happen. You mentioned actuators, you mentioned uh, sort of uh, uh, things that can actually react. And, uh, and here, let's talk about the energy sector. The I would say in the utility world, there's a need for standardization. So you have uh, on the communication side, 4G, LTE is good, but it will take many years to deploy. Sensors may be a bit expensive. Storage is very important, whether it's for the grid or for the small sensors. And, and I mean, yes, energy storage is one of the yes. big issues yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and the, uh, I would, the, the control part, the, uh, the software part is important as well. Yeah, because it needs to be agile. You, you can't have it going back to the SCADA and back. It needs to be, that's, there needs to be local decision making. Okay, that's, I think that's the heart of a smart grid. Smart yeah. grid is not a centralized decision. Mm -hmm. The reason why, again, we bought this uh, ambient uh, company is that they are able to have decentralized intelligence take the decision at the substation level and not going back necessarily to the, to the control center. Perfect. And unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. But thank you very thank much you. for that insight. Uh, I hope you enjoy, uh, enjoyed watching it. And we're going to uh, continue some of this commentary as well over the next uh, few days at European Utility Week. Thanks again for watching.